In this video, I'd like to continue talking about the Menger sponge, which is this fractal that you can see here, where it's essentially created by starting with a cube and then dividing that cube into 27 smaller cubes and removing the cube from each of the six faces and removing the cube from the center. And we can call that step one. In fact, let's look at a diagram showing this process of going from step to step where this right here is our first step. And after we split this into 27 smaller cubes and remove the cube in the middle from each of the six faces and you can see the cube in the very center. Then we go into step two where we isolate each of these remaining cubes and repeat that same process. We split it into 27 smaller cubes and then remove the center cube from each of the six faces and the cube from the very center. And we do that for each of these remaining 20 cubes here. And for step three, we would just continue that. We would look at each of these smaller cubes, subdivide it into 27, remove the middle cube from each of the six faces and the cube from the very center. And of course, this process is carried out infinitely many times. And what I'd like to do is focus on finding the fractal dimension of this shape. And to find the dimension of an object like this, we need to use an equation that we derived in a previous video, where we relate what is known as the scaling factor, which we call one over R. And this scaling factor is essentially what we are scaling each of the side lengths by. And if we focus on one of these side lengths, notice that it was split into three equally sized pieces. So in this case, each of these pieces are one third of the original side length. And you can see that for each of these side lengths, they are one third of what they used to be. So we can say that our scaling factor is simply one over three. And then we have a variable which we call n, and n is the number of new pieces or number of pieces that are created after each step of the iteration process. And in this case, we divide the starting cube into 27 smaller cubes, and then we remove one cube from each of the six faces, and we remove the cube from the center meaning that in total we remove seven of the 27 cubes. And in the end, we just have 20 of these smaller equally sized cubes. So the number of pieces that we create going from one step to the next is 20. Each of these cubes, these smaller cubes, would then be subdivided into 20 even smaller cubes. And when focusing on one of these tiny cubes, each of these would then be subdivided into 20 even smaller cubes than that, and so on. So each step of the process creates 20 new cubes within each of the cubes. So n in this case is 20, and then we have the variable d, which is the dimension. And this is what we're trying to solve for. So the equation relating these three ideas is that r, when raised to the d power, that dimension, is equal to the number of pieces. And like I mentioned, we derived this in an earlier video, which I highly recommend watching if you want to see where this equation comes from. But you can verify this equation by looking at something like a square, where we might divide each of these pieces into three, or each of these side lengths into one third of the original side length, meaning that our scaling factor is one third. And notice that this would split the square into nine equally sized smaller pieces, where each of these pieces has an area that is one ninth the original area. So in this case, R is three, the number of new pieces is nine, and we already know that the dimension of a square is two. And you can see if we plug these values into the equation, it does make sense because we have three 
to the second power, 3 times 3, and that is equal to 9. So this equation does make sense for self-similar objects, and we can use it to find the dimension of this Menger sponge. So let's plug in our variables, and we can set up an equation involving d, and then we can solve for that missing variable. Since we know that r is 3, or 1 over r is 1 third, meaning that r is 3, n is 20, and plugging these into our equation, we have 3 raised to the d power is equal to 20. And we're asking, what do we raise 3 to to get 20? And we can rephrase this exponential equation in terms of a logarithm. Since logarithms can be evaluated on a calculator. And as a logarithm, the logarithm would have the same base as the exponential equation, namely base 3. The input of the logarithm is what our exponential equation is equal to, 20 in this case. And logarithms are always equal to exponents, since logarithms are really just exponents. And again, this is essentially the exact same thing. We're asking what power do we raise 3 to to get 20, and that exponent, that missing exponent, is this variable d. So let me just make a little bit of room. And the way to actually evaluate this on a calculator is to use the change of base rule. And we can either use base 10 or base e, which is the base of the natural log, since those buttons are generally on most scientific calculators. And if we use base 10, we can write this as log base 10 of our original input divided by log base 10 of our original base. And usually, if we're using base 10, that's just the common log, and so we can omit the base in that case, because if you don't see a base in a logarithm, you can just assume that it's base 10. Or we can also use base e. We can write log base e of that original input divided by log base e of the original base. But logarithms with base e, that's just the natural log, which we write as ln. So we can do this as ln of 20, the natural log of 20, divided by the natural log of 3. And either way, when we plug these into the calculator, we will get the exact same answer. So let me make just a bit more space. And plugging this into the calculator, we find that the dimension d of this Menger sponge is 2.7268, and this is an irrational number, meaning that it'll go on forever. There are infinitely many decimal places, and we will not have a pattern. So the dimension of this shape here, this Manger sponge, is approximately 2.73.